Hey, welcome back to another episode of Mr. Um Rocks. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and look at CSS code. I've got a basic HTML page set up right now with just a little bit of code. Notice that this is in um, Notepad++, and the thing I like about Notepad++ is that it does uh, recognize HTML code and will give you little helps and hints by color coding things. Um, the pairs of HTML tags are the HTML tags that must go in pairs. When you click on one, you can see its pair. So you know that these guys are paired up here and here. So this is the basic structure. HTML, everything is wrapped up in that. I've got the head on top of the body and inside the head. I'm going to put an external link to some CSS code that I have not yet written. So this is what it looks like. It's just a link. Arial style sheet. Uh, type is text slash CSS. And in the href, this is the part that I need to pay attention to for this particular project. Uh, my style, it can be anything I want, let's call it um, uh, EME styles. And so this is going to be my style sheet. So notice it has the extension CSS. And to create this, I'm going to go to File New. Uh, right here, I will save this as. And I'll put it in the same uh, folder as this. And so I'm going to say uh, this is going to be EME styles with a capital S and uh, dot CSS and now this guy is ready to go so I've got my EME styles here and then I've got the actual page right here so this is how external uh, CSS works I could have a thousand pages each one having this link and all the style rules that I put in my CSS page will apply to every HTML page that has this link. That way, for instance, if I have a website with 100,000 pages and I can go into this one file and change the background color to blue, it's going to change all of my CSS or all of my HTML files uh, that are linked to this CSS file. It'll change them all to whatever background color I choose. So that's the basic idea behind this. And so at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put in a couple of div tags. So I'll say uh, div and uh, we'll do a couple in here. Um, and these div tags are going to be named. So I'm going to use a class name. And so I'm going to say uh, class uh, equals and I'm going to give it a name. Uh, let's say I'll do a header. So this is going to be header div. And uh, I'll do a few others. Um, I'll so go ahead and put the word header in here just so when I first see this I can see where they all are. And so that's my header div, and I think I'll do, let's say, four divs. So my header div, and I will do a, mm, let's say, nav div for navigation, and I will do a body div. Actually, I'll do a left panel. Sorry, make that right panel. Uh, a right panel div. And finally, I will do a body div. Oh, one other div, very, very important. I'm going to take all of these things and I'm going to wrap them in what I will call a wrapper div. And so all of these divs will exist inside a larger div. And uh, this guy will be, um, let's just say div, and I'll say uh, class equals, and I'll say uh, wrapper div. So everything else is going to be wrapped up inside of this div. So I'll end this, this guy. And then since I want this guy to be uh, around or surrounding all of the others, I'm going to come down here. And uh, I will put the end of my div right here. So I'll just say uh, end div. OK, so that looks good. So I can see that if I select this one, I can see that it's partner, it's pair. Uh, beginning and then end is right down here. These guys are paired horizontally here, 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 and here, and they are ready to go as well. Each one has its own name, so now I just need to jump over into this part, and I'm going to go ahead and start each of these. So to use one of these divs, I need to take the div name. So I'm going to start with my wrapper div, and I will come in here and I'll simply say dot wrapper div, and then I need to use curly braces. Um, and inside here, I'm going to put all of my um, different rules. Okay, moving on. Now we've got some 
other code in here. I just put this in. Uh, background color is black. So inside my wrapper div, notice that this dot indicates that this is a class name. Since I use the keyword class and the attribute here, wrapper div, to access that over in the CSS, I simply use the dot. Very important. Then I say the same name I had over on my HTML. And now I have my rules in here. Each of these have um, what I'm changing my, um, in this case, background color, colon, and then the specific attribute, followed by a semicolon. So that's the pattern. Background color is going to be black. The width is 800 pixels. The height is 800 pixels. Notice I have my semicolon here and here. The position is going to be floating. And let me get rid of this for just a minute to see what the difference is. If I come in here and take a look at this right now, whoops, I forgot to save that. Uh, right now, this guy uh, says that it's over here in the side. So I can see that this is pushed right up against the edge, and that's not good. I want it to be in the middle. And moreover, I want it to stay in the middle even as I change the size of my window. And so I'm going to put right here, position is floating, and then immediately after, margin auto. So margin talks about the size on either side of my div. So again, I've got my main wrapper div. And since this div extends around the other four, the other four divs are going to fit inside this div. So just to see that the style sheet actually is working, I will change this to uh, gray. And I change my margin to auto. So now when I reload this, notice it's gray in here. And I have my header uh, listed here. So let's change the names of those. So this was my header. This is going to be my navigation div. This is going to be uh, my panel. So I'll just say panel. And this is going to be my body. OK, so I'm going to give these guys dimensions now. Before I do that, let's just go ahead and give them color so we can see what's going on. So the first thing I can do down here is I can do the same thing I did before. I'm just going to grab this name, which is header div. And I'm going to give this guy dimensions in a few moments. But for right now, let's take him over here. And I'll put my dot for a class, give it the name, curly brace, end with a curly brace. And inside here, I can give this guy uh, different values. So I think I'll take these values for right now, drop them in here. And background color now, let's just make this uh, yellow so I can really see it show up. This isn't for beauty. This is just for looks. I'm going to leave the same width but I'm going to have the height be 100. And if I save all that now and reload, notice that I have my header is right there. OK? And it has exactly the same width as my other elements. I can do the same thing now with the index. Uh, I'm going to grab this guy, which is my nav div. The nav div is going to be just a thin bar below the header. And uh, to do that, I will simply do the same thing. I'll come down here. I'll choose nav div. Notice that I haven't put the dot in. As soon as I put the dot in, it becomes the name of a class. And at this point, I can do the same thing I did over here. I can grab these guys, move them down, and this guy is ready to go. Let's change the color to green. This is going to be ugly, but at least we want to just see right now where all of these guys are. I'll leave the width here. I'm going to change this guy to, let's change this guy to 80. And I'm going to change this guy to 150. And let's see what that looks like. I have uh, control um, reload over here. And now I have a header, and I have my navigation. Navigation is probably a little bit too thick. Let's go ahead and drop that down to 50. And so I'm going to put my buttons. My buttons will be 50 pixels high, and all my buttons will go right here. Now I want to have a panel down on the side, and I want to have the body over here. If I just put these in, uh, let's say this distance is 800. So let's use 200 for the panel and 600 for the body. So I'll do the same thing I did before. I'm going to grab all this, copy it down, and I have a panel div. So let me take that uh, panel. And this guy will have a background color of black. And uh, let's say the width is going to be 200. And the height, well, let's see. I've got a height of 800, but I've already used uh, 100. Let's see. I've used 150 here for the header. I've used another 50, so that's 200. So that means I should bring this guy down to a height of 600, and that should use up the rest of my space. So let me see what that looks like if I go ahead and hit 
um, if I reload this now, and did I say that? Hmm, if I reload this, it's not working out the way I wanted, so why not? I have my background color. Let's check the name. Uh, I notice that I have right panel div is a different name. So that's the kind of thing that trips us up. If it's not working and we've got a name wrong or misspelled or something, obviously this is all case sensitive. So even if I put a lowercase p here, it wouldn't work. But let's see now if I've got the right class name. And there it goes. Notice that my body is down here, and that's not good. So I'm going to come back in now. I'm going to add my body div. And so to do that, I come in and I just change this right panel to body and how am I going to make uh, this work so it all fits in the space let's change this to pink and at this point I'm ready to reload and now look at that it's sticking way down Well, partly because it has the same dimensions as this guy so I'm going to change my width to let's see uh, 800 minus 200 to 600 so this is going to be 600 by 600 and I want it to fit over here. Now the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to take this same position, I'm going to say position floating, and I'm going to bring that for the right panel here, and I'm going to bring that for this guy down here, and I'm going to say right uh, position floating, and I'm going to say float, layout, float, and I'm going to say, um, let's say left. Okay, and I take the same, I take these two same guys, and I'm going to put them right here, and I'll get position floating and float left, and at this, oh, I think I already had that, that's interesting, okay, so float left, and now if I say, okay, uh, take a look at this, and now it fits in perfectly, so it's fitting right in here. However, if I were to extend this black bar a little bit, since this is 200 and this is 600, this guy fits in perfectly. But if I were to change it so that um, I use up more than 200 here so that I don't have enough room for my 600, remember the wrapper is only 800. So I have 200, I only have 600 left. So if I were to make this guy larger than 600, let's try 700, let's see what happens now. I simply hit reload and it pushes him down. He can't fit, so he's going to float to the left. He'll only come up and fit in this area if I give him the space to do that. So I'm going to change this guy back to 600, um, and this guy is going to remain 200. You know what? I think I would like this better at 150. And I'm going to change this to 650. And so again, that should make it so that he fits in there and that's good. So this guy plus this guy is going to add up to my 800. In any case, this guy is floating. The margins are set, so no matter how I move this guy, he's going to fit in the middle. Now, this isn't very pretty, but at least it shows you the basic structure of my page, and I can leave it there. All I need is I've got uh, these five divs, and I can put all of the content for my page inside this and this adjust these dimensions so that it's going to fill up the page or however I want it to be. So that's it for today. Bye-bye.